Coming up on this episode of Freedom From Fire, we'll shed some light on a highly taboo and stigmatized topic as September is National Suicide Prevention Month. Then later in the show, we'll meet a special young ambassador for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Stay tuned. We have a lot to discuss on Freedom From Fire. Hello, and welcome back to another exciting and informative season of Freedom From Fire. I'm your host, Deputy Commissioner of Planning and Risk Reduction, Craig Murphy. Here at Freedom From Fire, we aim to improve your quality of living by giving you fire and life safety information. We also introduce you to our local safety partners. Suicide prevention is a 365 effort. We use September to provide a special focus. We look to reach out to those affected by suicide, raise awareness, and connect those who are in need with treatment services. September provides a dedicated time to come together with collective passion and strength around a difficult topic. Research has shown that 43% of all adults suffer adverse health effects from stress. However, it is the men and women in the emergency service professions that are at a greater risk of suffering long-term stress that can, least, that can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, commonly referred to as PTSD. Stress is a serious occupational hazard in the fire service, affecting health, job performance, morale, and family life. We have a great panel of guests here today to talk about suicide prevention. Let me introduce Fire Prevention Battalion Chief Thomas Kane, retired Battalion Chief Michael Yeager, and paramedic Anna Maldonado. Thank you so much for joining us today. Could you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Uh, my name is Thomas Kane, and uh, the Battalion Chief, as Chief mentioned, of Fire Prevention. Been on the department for 26 years. Currently, uh, uh, I was a former uh, executive board member in Local 22, International Association of Firefighters. And during that time, we uh, developed a program of peer support, which is directly involved with the topic we're discussing today. And I started that program with the gentleman sitting next to me, uh, retired Battalion Chief Mike Yeager. So my name is Mike Yeager, and I spent 41 years in the fire department. I retired as a battalion chief. Um, right now, I'm the, I'm the peer coordinator for Local 22, which is our International Association of Firefighter uh, Union. Um, we, we were real uh, emphatic about suicide prevention, um, drug and alcohol use, stress, PTSD, post-traumatic stress, um, all those things that are relative to suicide prevention. Thank you. And I'm Fire Service Paramedic Anna Maldonado, 13 years as a medic in the street, currently uh, in the EAP office. We also are very highly uh, involved in suicide awareness for our members. Thank you. All right, so a question. I want to start with you, Chief Kane. All right, are there risk factors associated with suicide? And if they are, what are those risk factors? Well, um, high stress in our position, whether it be as a firefighter or a paramedic or EMT, the job that we do every day puts us in a, in a lot of stress. We're, we're, we're face a lot of uh, situations that could lead to uh, PTSD, as, as you had mentioned, or PTS, post-traumatic stress, without the disorder, the uh, classification sure. or diagnosis. Um, and as things go bad, um, Mike t uses the term a lot, as the bucket fills up, you know, you need to empty that bucket. Once it gets full, then people can't handle their problems, and we try and help them out as we can. In our job, uh, there are a lot of stresses. There's a lot of things that we see on the job where uh, it adds to it, and 
trying to uh, allevi alleviate some of that stress is hard because we can't necessarily go home to our family and discuss some of the things that we see because now we're burdening them with that same stress. So we, there's many stresses that, that we face on our job and a lot of times, or in the previous, previously, there wasn't many ways or outlets to help that out. And, and recently, as, as we'll discuss, we do have more now. So let's, really quickly, I'd like to touch on some of those outlets. Like before, there was peer support. Before, we had an employee assistance program that engaged in this fashion. How will we normally address stressful things that happened at, at, at work? alcohol <laughs> people would go to the bar after work and they would drink it out drink out their problems and um, this is not the best way of doing that um, does it always lead to problems no but a lot of times it does and it doesn't help once you're dealing with stresses the alcohol usually creates more and it puts you in a worse position to deal with the stresses you, you went in there with sure. so um, now we have the peer support, we have EAP. We also have a chaplain program, which is beginning, um, actually next week the training is going to begin uh, for that, and we will have an official chaplain program in the fire department for the, fir for the first time that I'm aware of. Uh, there are different avenues, and we're reaching out to our members to let them know the different things we have that we can help them so that they're not on an island, and we're trying to change the culture within the fire department to let everybody know that, yes, there is help, and it's okay to ask for it. All right, thank you. Chief Yeager, um, so the warning signs. This is National Suicide Prevention Month. What are some of the warning signs that, that, that we should be aware of and looking out for when it comes to you know, you know, suicides? Well, most of the suicides that happened in the fire department over the last six or seven years, we look back on and see what was going on, and almost all of those suicides had red flags associated with it. Um, whether it's depression or anxiety or changing someone's demeanor or more drinking or drugging or not showing up for work, anything that takes you out of the norm of what a person is, is a, could be a sign for, for some kind of trouble. Part of the problem is if those signs are recognized, which they're usually not, but if they are, people don't know what to do. So part of the problem when we go out to, to or part of the solution when we go out to start talking to people with station visits, we're going to let them know about what they can do in order to get help, whether it is through the EAP or peer support or, or the chaplain services. So, given the experiences that we've been through with suicides, I'm, uh, one specifically that touches both of us, um, so uh, what are some of the resources that we can point our people that are crying out for help, but if we don't know what to look for, you know, you know once we do identify that there is a problem and it, it would become, it may lead to this, what are some of the resources? I know we had mentioned, you know, the, the, the three we had mentioned, the, the chaplaincy and peer support, and, but do we go beyond that? Do we go beyond that? In the peer support world, we are really just referrals. We're going to send almost all of our people to our EAP, unless they're opposed to that, then we have other resources available. Um, but our first, our first um, place to take somebody is to our employee assistance program. We've got a strong employee assistance program. They do a real good job with it. They have a list of resources for people from, from any, any different thing, family things, kids, doesn't really matter. They have the resources for it. That's, that's what we're going to bring our people. So, Anna, you spoke of um, the EAP, the Employee Assistance Program. How does the Employee Assistance Program work with these new organizations? chaplaincy and peer support to um, get help to our members. We try to maintain communication. It's all new now, so it's starting to get better for everyone to know who to refer to or help each other with. This is all new, so, you know, it's a learning process as we go along. So is it, it is important to help promote awareness. We know that. Mm -hmm. But for our viewers, you know, what are some of the ways that we can promote awareness or they can take away from this program and share with, you know, their families, um, families of first responders, you know, you know, what are some of the, you know, the takeaways? Like, what do we do to make them aware? Well, when they notice their, their changes, their mood changes, um, their, their actions, like uh, Chief Yeager was saying, you know, they, they change the way their work ethics are as well as their behavior. Here in the department, in the EAP office, we made suicide awareness pamphlets 
We hand them out throughout the whole city. Everyone is aware of what we hand out, what we can give to them um, as far as treatments, not only for the member, but as well as their family sure. and children yes. to help them um, you know, become a little bit more aware of what signs to look for. Sure. So, go ahead, Chief. Uh, Chief, what I was gonna say is uh, we're, we're blessed right now. Uh, the time in society, you're, you're seeing more and more awareness of suicide prevention and mental health, behavioral health. And in, in our department, we're, we're no, uh, no different. Uh, starting at the top, Commissioner Teal, as well as the deputy commissioners, we're getting support with the programs, the interaction. Uh, we haven't come up with a name with it. We're calling it an umbrella program, but we're coming up with a better name sooner. Sure. But it's, it's uh, EAP, peer support, chaplain, um, uh, mental health consultants, which is a union EAP, but all these things under the umbrella trying to help our members. And uh, the commissioners uh, right behind it, we meet semi-regularly and we have full support from the administration and we're trying to get that message out so people understand that. One of the problems that we run into is that our culture does not allow us to be asking for help. One of the things, because uh, it, it makes you look weak, and we're trying to get across to everybody that it, it's, it's, that doesn't make you, you're not weak if you ask for help. It's, it's hard to do, which makes it even, even more, more important that you ask for help and get the help that you need so that we can avoid some of these things. Absolutely. So, peer support, chaplaincy, EAP, availability. When do our folks, when can we call? And then when we call, you know, what's available to them at when, when they can call, 24-7? 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Absolutely. We are available for anyone. Yep. Any Absolutely. member, any family member or children as well. And so is the peer support and so is the, so is the chaplain thing. So, so people that are faith-based, they don't want to talk to a peer or an EAP, they want to talk to a chaplain. People that, are, that don't want to go talk to an official agency like an EAP, they want to talk to a peer. So everybody has somebody, nobody's going to be left out there alone. Everybody has somebody they could call or talk to. Confidentiality is one of the key parts of all this too. Every one of these organizations, the ones that we mentioned, uh, there's a confidentiality. So if you do have something to say and you're worried about other people finding out, it won't happen. Uh, we're bound by that confidentiality uh, within legal requirements, um, but uh, your, your information will be kept confidential and you will be able to get the help you need without sharing it. And awesome. sharing it. And that is key to confidentiality. Um, so listen, um, I want to thank Chief Yeager, Chief Kane, and Adam <clears throat> for joining us today and sharing this vital information that has to be, I mean, this. Thank you to LaSalle for allowing us to get this information out. It gives us a vehicle that everybody should know, and more importantly, family members should know to be able to see what signs to look for. All right, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to meet a very special young lady and hear from her organization. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Freedom From Fire. I'm your host, Deputy Commissioner of Planning and Risk Reduction, Craig Murphy. In this half of the show, we're going to turn our attention to a condition called muscular dystrophy. Simply stated, muscular dystrophy is a term that refers to a number of diseases that cause progressive loss of muscle mass, resulting in weakness and sometimes loss of mobility. Children born with severe forms of muscular dystrophy may never gain the ability to walk, achieve other developmental milestones. So it is wonderful and amazing news to receive that this year's young ambassador, Claire, may be the first SMA type 2 patient to walk on her own in the next few months. But wait, I am getting ahead of myself. Each year, the Philadelphia Fire Department and the International Association of Firefighters Local 22 raises money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association during the annual Fill the Boot campaign. This year, over $138,000 were raised for Muscular Dystrophy Association of Greater Philadelphia. I'd like to thank everyone that donated and made that possible. 
We have several guests joining us today to talk about muscular dystrophy and our campaign efforts. Please let me introduce you to the Executive Director of the Muscular Dystrophy Association in Philadelphia, Mrs. Ms. Amanda Sweet. Hi, Amanda. This year's Muscular Dystrophy Association Ambassador, Claire. Hello. <laughs> and Claire's mother, Amy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. No problem. So, Amanda, can you tell us a little bit more about Muscular Dystrophy and the Association? Sure. So, um, the Muscular Dystrophy Association is a nationwide um, it's a nonprofit, and we have um, an office in Broomall, Pennsylvania. So, we cover Philadelphia and uh, South Jersey and Delaware. Um, and muscular dystrophy uh, actually is a form of neuromuscular diseases. So um, the MDA covers 43 of those neuromuscular diseases, okay. um, which actually includes ALS and um, spinal muscular atrophy, which is the type of muscle disease that Claire has. Okay. All right, so um, the campaign efforts to support muscular dy dystrophy are truly impactful. Every year here in Philly, you'll see firefighters all over the city. That's right. You know, and, 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 and we're out there holding our boots, collecting donations for the MDA. At the end of the campaign, the money that we collect, that 138000 that we collected this year, where does that money, where is that money used? So uh, the MDA offers different local services and it also contributes to research. So when people are filling the boot and when the firefighters are helping us with that campaign, um, they're basically servicing different um, local services that are offered, which would be, we have care centers mm -hmm. um, so that children like Claire can get multidisciplinary care sure. um, at DuPont, at CHOP, um, and then also at Penn and at Temple. Um, we have a summer camp program for kids. So Claire's too young now, but um, from, for kids ages 8 to 17, we okay. um, have local children that come to a, um, to a camp at no cost to their families. Awesome. We have an equipment loan closet um, in case people need some medical equipment in between insurance or other kind of difficulties that they might have. And then, of course, we also contribute to research nationally sure. um, to fund some cure, to find some cures for these diseases. Good, good. That is great yeah. news. So, so um, other than when uh, you see firefighters out with full of boot, how else can you contribute to the Muscular Dystrophy Association? So we have a lot of different fundraising efforts throughout the year. We have a gala that people are welcome to get involved with. We do a walk uh, every May. Yes. And then, of course, anyone can go to mda.org um, to donate to the cause. Do you, uh, to piggyback on that question, so do you believe that the campaign is significant Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, the, the campaign that the local 22 firefighters do every year is actually our biggest support of the year. Okay. So they're our biggest sponsors. Sure. So the firefighters that are out there, you know, year after year, hour after hour, day after day, they're our biggest supporters of the entire year. So we couldn't, you know, we couldn't have the programs that we have without their support. Good stuff. So do you know offhand how long that relationship's been? So between. the International Association of Firefighters has worked with the MDA since I think 1964. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as I know, Philadelphia has been on board that whole time. So, you know, the contributions that the Philadelphia Fire Department has made and then the IFF as a, as a whole, it's about $600 million to the MDA, That's which is awesome. incredible, yeah. So question on that. So Philadelphia isn't the only fire department that supports this yep. through the Philadelphia Exactly, okay. yeah. So Philadelphia, okay. I think, is the 11th in um, the Northeast, which is amazing. You know, we're a very high level. Um, but throughout the, you know, continental U.S., there's many, many fire departments that fill the boot. Okay. Yeah. That, that is awesome. All right. Um, so, a question for you, Amy. All right. So Claire was able to take advantage of some pretty cool activities over the summer. Amy, can you please tell us you. <clears throat> what your experience with Claire has been like with the campaign? Well, it's been wonderful. We've been able to visit nine fire stations over the summer. So we didn't just visit. Claire would come rolling in in her wheelchair and her fire chief hat sure. and would be treated like royalty. Am I, am, am I, am I, am I Cinderella? And you're Cinderella? There yeah, you so, so she has a little Cinderella, Cinderella car awesome. that we tie on the back of her wheelchair so she can pull it around. Uh, so we would go and these firefighters, um, all men, one woman, yes. um, would allow Claire to do things like spray them with fire hoses. Mm -hmm. uh, they allowed her to sit in fire trucks. 
They played with her, they played chase. Uh, she had a, a wonderful, wonderful time getting to be fire chief for the day <laughs> on nine separate occasions. Yeah. So a little bit more about, <clears throat> excuse me, the ambassadorship. You know, is, is it, it, it's yearly. So she's the ambassador for this year. That might be Amanda. That, okay. Yeah, yeah. I really. Yeah. So generally, every year we have a different child that, you know, lives in Philadelphia. Yes. Is you know, um, getting some of the services that we provide, sure. and you know, obviously being as cute as Claire is just an added bonus. Yes. Um, for her to be the ambassador this year, yeah. Sure. Um, so Claire, do you feel like talking about how your summer was? No, we, we had a procedure this morning. She was okay. under anesthesia, so I think uh, she might be a little out of it, but she was able to have this procedure, which is saving her life, due to research that the MDA yes. supported, which was supported by firefighters. Yes. So she's still alive, thanks to all the work that everyone does here. Awesome. That is, is the, and, and, and that's why it's such a big campaign and event for the Philadelphia Fire Department and the International Association of Firefighters. She's living proof That's right. that it's... She possibly should not be here right now without the treatment that she's on. That's, that, that's awesome. Um, so, so my next question was going to be the information you received from the doctor. Yeah, so with any luck, tired Claire, with any luck, Claire will be walking with a walker in the next few months without a whole bunch of support and then we hope someday to be walking completely unsupported and her doctors think that's not a crazy dream at all. That is wonderful. Right? You walk someday? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll be following Claire. Yeah. I'll be yeah, well I will be paying watch? attention. Say, okay. I'll be paying attention yeah. just so I can get one of those cool fire chief head helmets <laughs> like you have. It's only one. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? That's, that's, that's awesome. Amanda, do you want to share anything else with um, our viewers on how they can get involved with muscular dystrophy? Yeah, sure. So, um, like I said, our office is in Broomall. They can go to mda.org to receive some more information um, about, some, you know, if anybody would be receiving our, you know, any of our services, we'd be happy to help them, you know, guide them to the care center. Sure. Some people don't have a diagnosis and are looking for one. They, they suspect that they might have a muscle disease, but they're not sure. sure. So we can always help them get appointments. Um, and then, of course, if they want to get involved by volunteering or, um, you know, in any other way, we'd love to hear from them. So they can go online find our office, our phone number, and, you know, email me, email us, and um, we'd love to have as much help as, as we can get. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to keep this going. That's right. Yeah, yeah. way outside. And of, we did also bring a little something for you. So oh. um, we have some pictures. I don't know where we're looking here. But, um, oh, Claire, yeah. we took pictures all summer long, right, of all of our adventures all year yeah so we had so much fun so you'll see claire spraying the hose she met what's your fire mascot's name uh uh gentry gentry yes. yep so she met gentry not a huge gentry fan right a gentry. not a huge gentry sure. fan um but, and, i was scared of gentry right yeah gentry. and we had the philadelphia firefighters came out to our summer camp and they cooked dinner for no. everybody so this is just kind of a commemorative oh, that we wanted to give thank to you, you. I'll yeah make sure Commissioner Teal thank gets you it as well. yeah as just a all thank right. you for all the work that local 22 and the philadelphia fire department does for the MD and kids like Claire. Well, thank you. <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks and, for um, us. No, no, it's, it's, a, it, it's great. Um, so remember, if you would like to find out more about LaSalle TV, you can check out our social media sites. And if you're interested in learning about the Philadelphia Fire Department, visit our Facebook, Twitter, and web pages. I would like to once again thank our guests for joining us today, and I would like to thank you for tuning in and watching. So, until next time, remember, fire is everyone's fight. Stay safe and remain free from fire.